Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be exploring the global political challenge of borders through my case study on the 2017 Catalan independence referendum. Spain is a country with complex internal borders that has been described by many legal scholars to be a decentralized unitary country. This means that although sovereignty is held by the central government situated in the Spanish capital of Madrid, the country is divided into several smaller autonomous communities that govern with, that exercise the right to self-government in limited capacities within their own borders. The region of Catalonia, situated in northeastern Spain, is one such autonomous community. The very political structure of Spain in itself shows us that borders are a complex concept, as even within the borders of a sovereign state, there can be multiple other borders that grant power and authority to local governments. As a region, Catalonia has historically been culturally distinct from the rest of Spain, and as a result, has evolved its own language, culture, and traditions, which has also led to the rise of nationalist sentiments within, within the country. Nationalism is a complex political phenomenon in which the interest of the nation, which is a group of people with a common shared identity, is promoted, especially with the aim of gaining or maintaining the nation's self-governance over its homeland to create a nation state. The nationalist, the nationalist Catalonian provincial government, led by President Carles Puigdemont, was highly dissatisfied with Catalonia's existence as a nation within a state, and instead wanted to establish Catalonia as a sovereign nation state in which the cultural boundaries of the, so of the Catalonian nation would mirror the political boundaries of the Catalonian state. Further contributing to the rise of the referendum are economic disparities within Spain. Catalonia is one of Spain's richest autonomous communities, and as a result, the gap between what they pay to the central government in the form of taxes and what they receive back from the central government in the form of government spending is estimated to be between 8 and 10 billion euros a year, a figure that got substantially worse following austerity measures implemented by Spain in the wake of the 2008 global financial crisis. As a result, there is a feeling of dissatisfaction amongst Catalonians as they believe they are getting the rear end of the stick in their relationship with Spain and they are not getting their fair share of public investments. These factors show us that borders are, not, are, borders are a multi-dimensional concept as they extend beyond just physical lines dividing areas to also the economic and cultural borders between different communities. It's very interesting that cultural borders play such a key role in this case study as throughout the rest of the world we are in fact seeing that cultural borders are becoming less and less significant with the advent of globalization which is the increasing interconnectedness of the world as a result of massively increased trade and cultural exchange. In Catalonia, and between Catalonia and the rest of Spain, however, we see that cultural borders are still ever relevant and the Catalonian national identity is held, high in, is held in high regard. As a result of these factors, a series of independence referendums were conducted between 2009 and 2015. However, these independence referendums were always meant to be symbolic and non-binding. Following growing pressure on the Catalonian government, on October 1, 2017, a binding independence referendum was conducted in which all Catalonians were asked to respond to the question, do you want Catalonia to become an independent state in the form of a republic? 93% of the 2.3 million respondents of the referendum voted yes, they wanted Catalonia to become a sovereign nation state. In the weeks following the election, the Spanish constitutional court declared the referendum illegal, the Spanish central government declared the referendum illegal, and key separatist leaders such as Puigdemont were arrested or fled the country in fear of arrest. We see that the referendum was largely unsuccessful in establishing a new country, and the referendum as a whole was not a success. Here, it's increasingly important to consider the right to self-determination with regards to the Catalan independence referendum. The right to self-determination is a human right which states that all groups of people have the right to freely, freely choose their sovereignty and international political status with no external interference. This, this human right is codified into international human rights law and can, be expressed, and can be explicitly found in Article 1 of the UN Charter and Article 1 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, also known as the ICCPR. The ICCPR says that all humans, all groups of people have the right to self-determination. However, through this case study, we see that this right is largely, is largely fallible. The definition of the right to self-determination, as defined by the UN Charter, is extremely vague and does not state any proper legal criteria as to what constitutes and what does not constitute a group of people. And additionally, it does not, it does not shed any information on which groups can legitimately claim the right to self-determination. Furthermore, it does not elaborate on what degree of autonomy should be granted as a result of the right to self-determination. Thus, there is a very large scope for disagreement between key stakeholders in the case study on the right to self-determination and the Catalan independence referendum. 
the Spanish government has repeatedly stated that the current status quo of Catalonia as a semi-autonomous region within the larger country of Spain is enough to satisfy the right to self-determination. However, the Catalan government has been adamant in stating that only a fully independent sovereign state, as was voted for by the Catalan people through the referendum, is enough to satisfy their right to self-determination. Thus, additionally, additionally, we should, it should also be noted that the right to self-determination is only a right of process belonging to people rather than a right to outcome. Perhaps it is this vagueness with regards to the right to self-determination that has led to the establishment of new borders in contemporary global politics becoming increasingly difficult. In even countries that have been able to gain de facto independence in recent years, such as Kosovo, still lack de jure independence as their borders are heavily contested and they, and they lack widespread international recognition from other countries. It can also be useful to draw a parallel between the Catalonian independence referendum and the Kurdistan independence referendum that was also held in 2017. The Kurdish people are a minority in Iraq and they're situated in the northern part of Iraq. And in 2017, they held an independence referendum to determine the fate of their country. In the, similarly to the Catalonian um, referendum, 90% or over 90% of Kurds voted for the formation of an independent Kurdish state. However, this referendum was also unsuccessful and there has been no change to the status quo of Kurdistan as a semi-autonomous region within Iraq. We're increasingly seeing that in contemporary politics, land is increasingly becoming the most valuable finite resource, and thus states are hesitant to cede any land, no matter the context or political ramifications, and we can see this in Spain as well. It is also important to consider legitimacy um, when discussing the Catalan independence referendum and analyze how the Catalan independence referendum might, might enhance the legitimacy of the Catalonian state. According to Andrew Hayward, legitimacy is the quality that transforms naked power into rightful authority, and political philosopher John Locke says that legitimacy can be gained through the consent of the governed, in this case, in the form of a referendum. The, the widespread support for the independence of Catalonia, as, approved, as shown through the referendum, um, increases, claim, increases Catalonia's legitimacy as it shows widespread support for the movement. However, we can also see that due to a host of other factors, Catalo claims of Catalonian legitimacy are also severely hindered. International observers that monitored the elections, that monitored the referendum, noted vast irregularities in the voting process and stated that the referendum had failed to meet the international standards for elections. Additionally, only 40% of all eligible voters, all eligible Catalonian voters, ended up voting in the referendum in no small part due to the pro-Spain constitutional political party, asking the supporters not to vote in an election that they saw as illegal and fraudulent. As a result, it may be argued that the referendum was not an actual representation of the will of the Catalonian people, and thus does not enhance claims of Catalonian legitimacy. The government has justified the low turnout by pointing out that the government, the, the Catalonian government has justified the low turnout by pointing out that the Spanish government controlled police had aimed at stopping the referendum during and before voting by what was described by Amnesty International as an unnecessary and excessive use of force. Additionally, we see that, we see that Catalonia fails to meet the Montevideo Convention's prerequisites to statehood, as although it has a permanent population, a defined territory and a functioning government, it has no capacity to conduct international relations as it has no recognition from other sovereign states. While legitimacy is not always necessary for a state to maintain its independence, as seen by the Taliban government's rule in Afghanistan without widespread international community recognition, it does allow states to govern with a minimum application of force, which is necessary for an economically thriving region like Catalonia. This could be remedied by Catalonia joining the European Union or the EU, um, as, it would give, it was, as it would give them agency as, as it would give them agency as a state. Um, as it was given agency and recognition as a state. However, the process of joining the EU requires unanimous approval from the European Council, of which Spain is a member, effectively giving Spain veto rights. Thus, it is unlikely that Catalonia would be able to join the EU, and as a result of this, they would find their borders becoming increasingly rigid in a Europe that is able to prosper due to globalization and use using the national borders, and they would have many economic losses as well. This, type, this case, in conclusion, we can say that this case study is highly significant in the context of contemporary global politics, where separatist movements all around the world, be it Kashmir in India, um, Nagorno Karabakh in Azerbaijan, or Scotland in the UK, are looking for ways to gain independence. By analyzing the case study, we are able to gain insight into how the right to self-determination may be pursued, and how states may look to enhance their legitimacy. This case study exemplifies the complexities of border in a, borders in an increasingly interconnected world, with borders establishing themselves between states, 
within states and between communities as well as a result. Thank you.